Hi everyone, I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio. I hope you're having a fabulous day today and you're not driving your family completely nuts. Yeah. Today we're going to be painting a wonderful still life of a transparent bottle or translucent bottle uh, with some white flowers in it and a little apple in the front. Okay, I think that you can do this. This is more on the more simple uh, kind of um, uh, painting lesson and then we're also going to get a little bit more difficult as we go. I'm doing three lessons a week. I'm hoping to get three lessons a week done. One for our little beginners, which is designed for our children, and then one for a level two, and, and then on up to level three with uh, even our adults. Okay, so let's get started, yeah. Now, as you're setting up, what I, I want to make sure that you have are some paper towels. You need some paper towels or a rag or something to wipe your brush off every once in a while. And then uh, you want to have a, a can of clean water or a cup of clean water to rinse out your brush. And then I also have just an array of colors. I have some teal, I have some purple, and uh, some gold and reds and various different colors. So we'll, I'll kind of shout them out as I go along. Uh, I also have um, that uh, wonderful large hardware brush. Okay, this is a two inch hardware brush. You might have a one and a half. I gave out quite a few of them to my students here in the last uh, little while. So, you know, this is that ratty brush that I put in your bags, you guys. And um, I'm still, uh, we just got the new canvases in. So any of my local kids, if you're wanting to um, pick up some supplies and you haven't signed up yet, you know, let me know. Okay. So now, um, oh, this is a fun palette. I used a piece of cardboard and painted it with some white gesso and so that I can just do my mixing here. You can use a paper plate, all right? Use a paper plate. I think I ran out of paper plates and I don't want to go to the store. So I just made my own palette here. So um, I've got that and then I have my canvas, all right? So now um, in order to, uh, I'm going to set that aside for a second because I'm not going to use that for a moment. But what I have is I have some uh, various different colors. So my setup is that I have these white flowers that are going to be shooting over this direction. So I want this area to be fairly dark on one side. And then I want the lighter part on this side. Okay, so dark on this side, light on this side. It'll create what's called Rembrandt lighting. Okay, ooh, that sounds kind of fancy, doesn't it? Yeah. So we're going to go with, um, I'm going to start out with my, my dark purple. I have a little dark purple here in my cup. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of water to it. I, accidentally left the lids off last night. That was fun. So I'm adding just a little bit of water to it just to make it move a little bit. And this is a super transparent color, you guys. So, you know, which just means uh, this one was kind of an inexpensive one. All right. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of crisscrossing over here. I'm going to move this canvas just or move this easel just a little bit. There. Okay. So I've got a little bit. You can see I'm making some crisscross uh, strokes like that. And then I'm going to move right on to my teal, okay? And I'm putting some teal. Some, this is some of this, my secret background. Some of you people have asked me, how do I do your fancy backgrounds? Well, you know, pay attention. This is how we're doing it, okay? So I've got this kind of nice, dark uh, little color going on. It's not too thick, not too thick. And uh, so purple, teal, a little bit more purple over here so that when I paint the white flowers, it's going to stand out really, really nicely. I'm going to go all the way down to, uh, to right about down into here with that dark purple, a little more teal. And then I'm going to grab my, this is the, um, the raw sienna, that yellowish color. It's kind of a, a dull mustard color, okay? We're going to put just a little bit of that in. Not mixing it up like wall paint, everybody. I don't want to just blend it, you know. Otherwise, I just throw it all into a jar and shake it up. No. It's more interesting if you leave these strokes. See that? Oh, my goodness, that's so pretty. So I'm just going to put, put those on like that. And we're going to go like this. And then I'm going to, be, and I'm doing this really fast, partly because I don't want it to dry, okay? I don't want it to dry really fast. I'm going to add some white, and we're going to add some white to it as we move across, okay? So I'm picking up some of those colors with my white, and I didn't rinse my brush out, so I'm picking the colors up with uh, white on my brush, crisscrossing them around like this, 
and then I might put a little bit of white on my brush here like this and throw some on the canvas and add just a tiny bit of teal so it's nice and light and it becomes lighter and lighter on the, the side over here, okay? I'll grab a little bit of yellow again and I'm just, just playing around with it. The main thing is don't over mix it and I got a little hair there. Ah, that's the problem with these hardware brushes. They get, get some hairs on them. So how I did that is I just kind of pushed a little bit and got that hair out of there. Some people will let it just dry and then pick the hairs out later, but I'm, I'm a little bit fussy with that. So, okay, so now you see how it's just getting that nice glow. So now I'll put a little bit more. I'm just going to keep going with that. This is kind of like watching paint dry, I know, but uh, we'll just keep doing this. Now, if you don't want all these brush strokes and you'd like a, a nice smooth look, that's nice and dark, woo, um, you can take a paper towel before it dries and kind of just kind of rub it in and you can get a nice smooth background. That's okay. And so I might uh, show you a little bit about how to do that here in just a sec because it's kind of nice to have a, a beautiful uh, background that doesn't have you know, too much going on. If the background has too much going on in it, so what happens? Well, you, everybody pays attention to the background and doesn't look at your, your subject. So we don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to go all the way up to the top. Whew. All right. You can pick different colors if you like, too. Okay. The main thing is you want something, you can even make it brown if you want. You want something that's a little bit darker on one side, and then you just kind of merge it together and light on the other. Okay, that's the way we go. It looks kind of glowy, doesn't it? I want to make it a little bit warmer over here, so I'm going to add some more yellow. So it feels like sunlight is going to come across the table that we're going to be putting our beautiful still life on. Okay, now. All right, so let me show you just a little bit on how to instead of if you don't want to have those big um, brush strokes and you want to make it a little bit smoother now hopefully it hasn't dried on me i'm just taking a little viva paper towel make sure you don't get a paper towel that's all linty how many times have i said that a lot okay so now i'm going to just take it very very lightly and i can just kind of kind of smooth that in a little bit all right i'm just really rubbing the very top layer of the paint. I'm not going down to the canvas. If I push too hard, it'll take the paint right off because we've got a lot of filler in some of this paint. So uh, this, uh, the white paint will, will be a little less likely to, to do that. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit more of the dark purple on my rag and rub that in. Okay. So anyway, this is just one of the options here. You could take your sponge brush. I'm going to put a little bit of blue with red so that some of the some of the paint sometimes gets just too thin. And then I can take my sponge brush and darken it up by just rubbing that on sideways if I want. Anyway, lots of different ways of doing it. Just uh, play around with it. See see what you can come up with. If it's an oil paint uh, and I want uh, to do this in oil. I can, I can really take my time because we don't have the, uh, the time problem of, of um, whew, mercy me, I picked up some red. Okay, uh, we don't have the time problem of, of worrying about it drying super fast. Now I made that really dark so that now you can really see it. So uh, there we go, that makes sense. All right, super dark. Now my flowers will really show up. So I'll play around with that and we'll uh, we'll come right back in just a moment, okay? Okay, well I think I'm really happy with the background so far. What did I do? Well up in this dark corner I actually took some phthalo blue, some of that really dark blue, and then I added a little bit of bright red to it and I put that in. It makes a super dark purple. And then I added some more purples and teals and I worked my way across adding the white and a, a little bit of that, um, that wonderful raw sienna or that kind of dim mustard color 
uh, just in a little bit with mixed in with the white. And so it's, it's light on one side and dark on the other. Now, it's wet, so I'm going to let that dry. And while we're letting it dry, I'm going to pull up my sketch pad and show you how we're going to construct our still life. Hold on just a second. Okay, now I have a great big piece of paper here. I have a ruler and I have a little bit of a felt pen that I'm going to show you how I construct these uh, bottles here. Don't use a felt pen on your canvas. No, you're going to use a pencil or a watercolor pencil or a piece of chalk. Okay, you can use chalk or charcoal, whatever you like, and that should work out just fine. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where my bottle is, and I want to make sure I've got this straight up and down. I'm going to look at the camera because I'm off to the side here. And then, uh, yeah, that looks about straight up and down. And we're going to put in a line. I'm going to put a line in like this. And, uh, and there's the, the straight up and down line, okay? Now, this is going to, it's not the side of the jar. It's the very center of the jar, or, or not the jar, the bottle, hello. Um, and then I'm going to uh, come up to the top and say, all right, well, here's my, here's my little uh, top of the, the, um, the bottle. Okay, and it's a, it's a little curved line, all right? It's not a straight line across. If you're underneath it, it's even going over the top, but we're gonna do a jump rope on this one. And then I'm going to take another line and come straight down, and I'm gonna find out how far it is from the center line to the outside, and I'm gonna match that up as best I can, okay? So there is the, the other side of the jar. And I do that so that I don't get a lopsided uh, bottle, all right? I want to make sure it's even on both sides. And how I do that is to have the line in the middle. And then you erase the line in the middle, or you paint over that, okay? You paint over that. Now, at the bottom of the neck of the jar, I'm going to put in another little jump rope, right, like that, okay? That's the little jump rope at the bottom of the neck. So we have our neck of the bottle, and then we're going to put in our shoulders to the bottle. So I'm going to come out, and then on this side, I want to come out the same spot. I put it out like this, and then I have kind of the little shoulder of the, the jar like that, like that. And then I'm going to do another little jump rope that comes down like this, okay? That's the top part with the shoulder of the bottle. Then I'm going to come down like this, and it's just at a slight angle, like that and like that. And the bottom of the jar, right down here, is lower in the middle than it is on the sides. So I'm going to figure out where it goes and put the bottom of the jar like that, okay? Now the other thing is that I'm going to be overlapping it. We're going to have our flowers that are going to come out like this, and I have all kinds of interesting little flowers. Aren't those pretty? Yeah. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in an apple right here, and I'm going to put the apple in that overlaps. See how that's over in front of it? So I'm going to sketch that in front like this, and we'll be doing this on the canvas as well. So I've got my apple, little apple shape like that, and here's the little stem that goes out like this, and, and there's my basic shape. But I just wanted to mainly show you how to get that bottle nice and straight. And now we're going to go and do it on the canvas. Okay, now I have my canvas uh, is nice and dry here. And I'm actually, you guys, I want you to draw this in with your pencil or your chalk or something. Uh, don't start right with paint because it's going to be a little bit uh, harder to manage if you make a mistake. But I'm going to go ahead and do it in paint. And if I make a mistake, I just take a paper towel, get it a little bit wet, and wipe it off. And it works just fine. So you could try that too if you want. All right, first thing I want to do is I want to decide where my flowers are going to end up. I don't want to go any higher than that spot right there. So I'm going to make just a, a couple little, you know, goofy little flowers right up at the top. I hope you can see that. And then I'm going to uh, think about how they kind of come down like this. And I want to put the top of my jar right about up, I think, right about here, okay? It's above the halfway line, all right? Above the halfway line, I want to make sure, and it's not in the middle, not in the middle. No, it's off to the side. Makes it much more interesting if it's off to the side. Okay, so now I'm going to go in, and I'm going to do that same thing. I do wish I had a piece of chalk. That would be nice. I'm not in my, my classroom, so that makes it a little bit more challenging, you know? So 
Uh, I, I can't get to all of my materials yet. So, okay, now I'm going to take that line and I'm going to draw the line down to about where I want the bottom of that bottle to land. Let's get that right down here like this. Okay, like that. And now I can go back up and actually I want to connect these flowers in here, so I better make sure I, I do that. And let's see, do I want those flowers a little bit longer? Oh, I think it's about right. Okay, let's try it. Then I'm going to come along just like I did in the drawing uh, right there. I'm going to put the side of the neck on. It's good. You get two, two lessons on how to do this. This is good. All right, we got the drawing on the paper and the drawing on the canvas. And then I put the two, and then the jump rope at the bottom. Don't forget the jump rope, and this is round up here. And then we put the shoulders on like this. More shoulders on like that. And they come down to exactly the same point crosswise like this. Hopefully they're even. They might look a little bit crooked to you because my canvas is at an angle. So uh, hopefully not. But okay, I'm going to move that in because it's just a little bit off there. And then I'm going to do the jump rope again like that. The edges of the bottle. And then the edges of the bottle. It's not exactly like the bottle I've got up here because the bottle up here is really complicated. So we're going to make it a little bit more simple. And then I want to, before I do anything else on here, okay, now at this point I'm going to erase out the middle so I don't have to overcome that with my little towel. Okay, and now I want to put my apple in. Okay, so I'm going to draw my apple over the top of that. I want it to overlap. This is part of, of uh, figuring out how to make things look three-dimensional. You've got to overlap it a little bit, okay? And this apple kind of, uh, let's see if we can get this shape right. That would be good. A little apple, it kind of is flatter on the top like that. And then we have a little stem that comes out like this, okay? Now I can go back in and put the bottom of that, that uh, vase in or that, that uh, bottle in. And I have my, my drawing of my apple, and I have my drawing of my vase, and I know where those flowers are going to go, okay? So, now, that's all I want to do for today, and then when we meet again next time, we will do the painting of this beautiful still life. So, hang in there, do the best you can, and I'll see you again next time. All right, bye-bye for now.